channel. As it is 2024, I'm gonna do a 24 books in 2024 video for you with my Christmas mug that I cannot be parted from. It's massive and I love drinking my raspberry tea out of it because I get a lot in there and it's always Christmas in my heart. Anyway, Christmas mug aside, I'm gonna talk to you about 24 books that I am so excited to read in 2024. Some of these have been on my TBR for a long time, some haven't been released yet, but I'm really excited to talk you through them. Some of these books are my most anticipated releases for this year, which means some of these books I have been waiting for for a really long time. My heart thumps just that little bit faster when I think about them. I am gonna start with the physical books that I own, just because they're here in front of me on the bed and it's easy. So which one shall I start with? My pretties. So first up, I am cheating a little bit, but it is the Eddie Flynn series by Steve Kavanagh. I got these for Christmas. I have read one of these before years ago. I want to say it was either 13 or 50 50, but it was such a long time ago. I can reread it now and not remember anything that happens. I remember it was about a guy who was a defense attorney and turned out that the serial killer was on the jury, but you kind of knew that anyway from the synopsis. Maybe my memory is better than what I thought. Oh, it's just dawned on me. The defense attorney was called Eddie Flynn. Oh my God, I'm so dumb. So yes, this series follows a defense attorney called Eddie Flynn. Each book is about a case of his. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to starting and reading this series this year. Last August, I read Kill For Me, Kill For You by Steve Kavanagh and I loved it. Now, Kill For Me, Kill For You has absolutely nothing to do with this series. I really like the way Steve Kavanagh writes. It's really fast paced, it's really gripping. Some of his plots are a little bit far -fetched. Fetched, but I'll take that. I'll take that. I'm gonna pop that up there. Okay, and then next we have The Bridge Kingdom. This is one of those fantasy books that I feel like everybody has read but me. This is another one that I got for Christmas. I don't know a great deal about it, but I know that it's got strong enemies to lovers. And it is book one in a series. Now, the last fantasy book that I read and gave five stars to was One Dark Window and Two Twisted Crowns. And that is gonna be very, very hard to be. Like, a standard has been set. And this year, I am so determined to read and love more fantasy. Fantasy. I think that was one of my goals for 2023 and <laughs> it didn't go very well. And it wasn't from lack of trying because I tried to read so many fantasy books last year and none of them were any good apart from One Dark Window and Two Twisted Crowns. So yeah, I'm looking forward to reading this one. Um, I love the fact that it's not very long. This is 340 pages. That's a bit of me. I could get on board with that. And Enemies to Lovers is one of my favourite tropes. I think done well. <laughs> I will fold myself into a pretzel for a decent enemies to lovers trope. You own my ass. Next, I've got The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy. This is another fantasy book that I know little about. I've just pulled up the comment because recently somebody asked me on TikTok, have you read this book? And they said it's quite cozy, a little bit weird and has strong anime vibes, which sounds interesting. I saw a rave review for this and somebody mentioning anonymous letters, which I, oh, I will fold into a pretzel. I will turn myself into a nut. When the main character communicates with the love interest anonymously, whether it's by letters or digitally, I love it. <laughs> that kind of thing. And I think the cover is gorgeous. Like the colors are just so bright and the spine. See, look at this, look at this. Beautiful, I just want you to know. Then we have the big old boy that is The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. This book is a beast. This book is 1,118 pages long. And I'm not looking at the page, but it does say on the end of the last page, Page, book one of the Stormlight Archive. Book one. May Lord have mercy on my soul. I read book one in the Mistborn trilogy by Brandon Sanderson and I wasn't mad about it. But there was a point where this was all over my FYP on TikTok. Everybody was raving about it. So I bought it because I'm a sheep. <laughs> and I am going to get around to reading it this year. I'm going to do it. I swear to God. I've heard that this is his best book. Okay. Then we have Still Missing by Chevy Stevens. This is a book that I got for my birthday from Natalie. She kindly sent it to me and I added it to my wish list because of Natalie. This is one of her top books of 2020. 23 and she also said it's one of the darkest books that she's read. All I know about it is that it's a thriller and then it's about a young woman who gets abducted. Did somebody say abduction? Sold! Yes, I'm so sick. Natalie reads a lot more thrillers than I do and I trust her opinion when it comes to thrillers. We don't always see eye to eye, but it tends to be more hits than misses. Dance of Thieves is another fantasy book that I feel everybody has read but me. And again, I don't know anything about it. I just know that I haven't read it. So I added it to my wish list and and I got it for Christmas. I think it's enemies to lovers, I think. The font though is tiny. Oh my God, I didn't realize how tiny the font was. <laughs> Might have to get it on the Kindle. I can't read that. I'm like this. 
actually, maybe my eyes just need to adjust because I've been reading on my Kindle recently. Maybe I'm just too used to the font on my Kindle. All right, maybe I'll give you a try. So yeah, I don't, I don't know anything else about this. It's fantasy. I think it's enemies to lovers. If you've read this, you let me know what you think. You pop a little comment and you correct this galley galley. Then we have The Kings of Wild, which is a standalone adult fantasy. This is another book that's been on my TBR for a while. I bought it because it was recommended in a video for good standalone adult fantasy recs. I believe this is about a group of mercenaries who used to be top of their game, but now they're old, fat and drunk. Their glory days are over but one of the men that was in the group has appealed to the rest of them say look I need you to come with me on this mission I think it's to rescue his daughter so we need to get ourselves into shape fix up look sharp and go on this mission and I've heard that the banter in this is really really good and the fact that it's a standalone as well is appealing then we have two books by the same author that I'm going to talk about at the same time um and it is Riley Sager so I've got Home Before Dark and then I've got The House Across the Lake I've read two Riley Sager books now the first one was Survive the Night the other one was the only one left. Survive the Night, I enjoyed. The only one left, I did not enjoy. It was riddled with plot holes. Gaping giant mahoosive plot holes. So many things didn't make sense to me and yeah I was really disappointed but I really liked Survive the Night and I bought both of these before I'd read The Only One Left and everybody loved it, they were raving about it and I strongly disagreed because of the plot holes. If you want to know what they are have a look on my Goodreads. I hear mixed things about this one. I don't hear a lot of people talk about this one but I'm not going to buy any more Riley Sager books until I've read both of these and then make my decision as to whether he is an author for me. Next I've got Daughter of the Moon Goddess and I am determined to read this either in January or February. Because it's been on my TBR for a really long time and I saw somebody say in a video on TikTok that this was one of their top reads, I think it would have been of 2022. They absolutely love this and I believe that there's a second book as well. I think it's a duet, but this one comes highly rated. I am really going for it on the fantasy front, but I'm so determined to get into more fantasy and I am excited for this. Excited. Why does my tongue suddenly become too big for my mouth when I start to film? What is wrong with me? He says on the back, inspired by the legend of Chang Yi's The Moon Goddess. And then it has Chinese mythology uh, weaved through it and all things like celestial powers. So sounds good to me. Next I have a diary of blood. When I tell you this has been on my TBR for, uh -huh, I want to say like over a year, maybe even longer than that. I've been putting it off because of the style that I know the book is written in. So to the best of my knowledge, this is in a letter format. In that it's about Dracula's lover or ex-lover writing him letters. So it's written in second person. So it's definitely something that I need to be in the mood for. I think I've just been procrastinating from reading it because I'm worried that I'm not gonna like it. When really I just need to give it a go and if I don't like it, I don't like it. If I do like it, great. And it's not very long at all. It's what? Under 300 pages, 292. I mean, I've got no excuse. I just need to knuckle down and have some discipline. I'm either gonna read this before the spring or save it for autumn, winter. Either way, it's getting read this year. I ain't missing around no more. Then we have A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. The only other V.E. Schwab book that I've read was Vicious. I liked it, however, I couldn't really connect with the characters, which I get is the whole point in that book. So it was fine, okay? It, it, it was fine. I hear really good things about The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, but I decided to pick up A Darker Shade of Magic. I know that this one is about a magician who can travel through time. This is another one that I would like to read fairly soon. I think maybe January, February, March, maybe even April, May, June, July. This year, this year, I'm going to read it this year. Then we have The Nightingale by Christian Hanna. This was another book that I got for Christmas and it is not as long as what I thought it was going to be. I thought this book was well over 500 pages. Oh my God, it's another book with tiny font. What is it with publishers and tiny fonts? I don't even need to wear reading glasses yet. I'm gonna need a magnifying glass. Now, in terms of what I know about this book, I know that it's a historical fiction and I know that it's supposed to be heartbreaking. I have seen people crying over this book and I'm not a big crier, not with my books anyway. Any other mind? minor inconvenience of my life. Sure, I'll have a daily breakdown. I'll have a little cry to make myself feel better. I'll scream into my pillow, who doesn't? Hashtag mild depression, you know how it is. But books, mm, it takes a lot for me to cry. I either cry because the book is amazing or I cry because the book's really sad. So I hear good things about this one and then the other Kristen Hanna books that I hear amazing things about are The Four Winds and The Great Alone. If I like this one, I will definitely look at picking up those other two. And then the last physical book that I've got is Bear Town by Frederick. Backman. I thought he had a different surname for some reason, but no, it's definitely Backman. I swear to God that I saw somebody saying that this has got hockey in it. I don't think it's like Al Kennedy off campus hockey, especially because I've seen people crying over it. Why do I keep buying these books that make people cry? What is wrong with me? Why do I want to cry? Oh my God, I'm sick. 
Oh, the font's a good size as well. The font is a decent size. That is all I know about this book, is that potentially it's about hockey and that it makes people cry. Also, that is ugly. Oh, it's not even a sticker. Now a HBO original series. I don't care. Get off the cover of my book. You look dirty. Okay, now I'm going to talk through anticipated releases for the year. And the first one I'm going to talk about is Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. I cannot wait for this book. I've read Part of Your World by her. I've read Yours Truly. And then I've read the Happily Ever After playlist, I think it's called. And I loved all three. Yours truly was my favourite. I love the way that Abby Jimenez writes. There's just something so cosy about it. I think she writes dialogue and characters really well. And I feel like based on the three books that I've read of hers, her work just gets better and better. So I am really looking forward to this because I think it could be even better than yours truly. This could be my first five star Abby Jimenez book. Next is The X-Files by Jessica Joyce and oh my god I'm so excited for this book. I read and fell in love with You With A View by her last year. It was her debut. It was incredible. It was one of my top reads of 2023. So best believe I am buzzing for The X-Files. She's another author that just writes incredibly well. It's like she writes for me. Her writing was made for me. I know that might be easy for me to say given that she's only written one book so far. I just feel as though some authors are born to write, born to do what they do and Jessica Joyce is one of them. Actually I'm, I'm telling a barefaced lie because I read the novella that she released uh, just before Christmas which was called A Risk We're Taking and that was incredible. I don't even like novellas. I'm a greedy cow. I need more than what 100 pages can give me. I like to know the characters inside out. I like to connect with them and I don't feel like you can do that with a novella but that novella holy smokes. It was so good. Then we have Wisteria by Adeline Grace. This will be the third book in the Belladonna series. If you have not read Belladonna or Foxglove by Adeline Grace, I would highly, highly recommend the audiobooks for both of those books. The way that the narrator voices Death, who is the love interest in book one, is insane. I have never been so turned on by a woman voicing a man in my life. Wait, 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 he's not even a man though, is he? He's death. He's not even real. He's made up of shadows. And I could not get enough of it. Adeline Grace's writing is so beautiful. It's lush. It's descriptive. The plot was just popping off. I loved both of those books. So I cannot wait for Wisteria. Basically, Belladonna is about a young woman who falls in love with death. And she can also like play with death in that she can eat these berries and then almost die and see him. And she's got a bit of a troubled past. It's a really, really interesting story. I am buzzing to read book three because of the cliffhanger that book two is left on. Book two is basically about a different couple, but there's also a love triangle dynamic for the characters from book one. It's really hard to explain without giving away any spoilers, but book three is gonna be explosive. And then I am so, so excited to read My Dark Desire by LJ Shen and Parker S. Huntington. Now, I don't know what this book is about. There is nothing available on Goodreads and I don't think the authors have come out and said what this book is about yet. I mean, they might have done and I just haven't seen it. But My Dark Romeo is book one, which I loved. I gave it four stars. It could have been a five star read for me. I, I was a little bit disappointed by the end, but I did love it overall. The writing was quick, sharp, snappy. It was delectable. In a monologue for both of the main characters was some of the funniest I've ever read. And it was almost like a modern day Bridgerton setting. It's an enemies to lovers, arranged marriage, marriage of convenience. There just wasn't enough grovel from the male main character given what he did to the FMC. He did redeem himself somewhat, but it wasn't enough for me. It was good, but it could have been better. However, I love this collaboration between LJ Shen and Parker S. Huntington. I've not read anything by LJ Shen. I do have one of her books on my TBR, Vicious, I think it's called. And I really like Parker S. Huntington. I've read Darling Venom by her. I really enjoyed that. But something really worked between these two in My Dark Romeo, and I'm hoping that My Dark Prince is gonna be even better. We're gonna get more of the good stuff. Sorry, not My Dark Prince, My Dark Desire. Have I been saying My Dark Prince this whole time? So it's Dark Prince Rose is like the series. I think they're going to be standalones. Okay, I must be absolutely crazy for including this book, but I I I'm going to do it because I am going to read This Summer Will Be Different by Carly Fortune because I'm hoping that this book will be different from the other Carly Fortune books that I've read or tried to read. Here's the thing with me and Carly Fortune. So every summer after, I, for the most part, I really enjoyed that book. I liked the way that it was written. I was surprised at how there were chapters written in the past 
past that I liked more than the chapters written in the present. Usually chapters in the past I get bored by. I just think, yeah, 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 okay, can we just go, can we just go to the present? Find it can slow down the pacing, make the book drag. So yeah, chapters in the past aren't my favourite, but not in this book. I really, really enjoyed it and I was so disappointed by that ending. I could accept that it was very similar to Love and Other Words, but what happened, what she did, the FMC, was unforgivable. But I did love the way that it was written. I loved the backstory, the character's relationship and that development. So I was disappointed by that. And then the other book, Meet Me at the Lake, which should have been renamed Drown Me at the Lake. I got to about 30%, I DNF'd as soon as she said, I spent 24 hours with Will and my life changed forever. Shut up. No, it didn't. No, it did not. Someone tell this girl what a fool she is being. Insta lust. I cannot stand it. I am violently allergic to it. But I am going to give this book a go when it is released. This is going to be baseball love for me though, because three strikes and you are out. If this book isn't any good, I will never pick up another Carly Fortune book again. Then we have Pirate Girls by Penelope Douglas, which I'm buzzing for. Penelope Douglas is one of my favourite authors. I have read all of their books. I wasn't the biggest fan of Falls Boys, admittedly. Like, it was fine. Focuses on the offspring of the Fall Away series, which funnily enough, I didn't like the Fall Away series, apart from Bully, because that's my bae. But I love the way that Penelope Douglas writes, so I'm definitely going to give this a go. They are an autobiography author for me and no matter what. <laughs> If they write it, I'm gonna read it. And then we have Somewhere in the Sunset by Estelle Mascom, which I am very excited for. So Estelle Mascom wrote one of my favorite series of all time, which was Did I Mention I Love You? This is one of those series that I read when I was getting into the romance genre at the start of lockdown. I've always been a reader going in and out of genres, but there was a period of time in my life where I used to just read thrillers really. And then at the start of lockdown, I properly got into romance. And this was a series that helped me get there and I loved loved it. But I'm excited about this book because it is going to be new adult. So did I mention I love you and then other books that Estelle has written, all of those have been classed as YA, but Somewhere in the Sunset is her first uh, new adult book. I know that this one is about a cop and an influencer. So I'm looking forward to this and seeing what she has done with it as her first new adult book and how she has grown. Next we have The Paradise Problem by Christina Lauren and I love the cover for this book. It just screams summer. This is a fake dating romance and the last fake dating romance that I read by Christina Lauren, which was The Soulmate Equation, I really enjoyed. So can they get it right again? That's the main reason I want to read this book is because of the trope and how much I loved it in The Soulmate Equation. And I'm thinking, yeah, they know what they're doing. And <gasps> The Unhoneymooners, that was fake dating. How could I forget? What is wrong with me today? Really excited to see if Christina Lauren can get it right for a third time. Okay, I have told you a lie because I have saved the best two till last. The two books that I am most excited for in 2024. The two books that if I thought about hard enough, I may poo my pants. My blood pressure goes through the roof when I think about these two books. So the first one is Tame and Seven by Chloe Walsh. Binding and Keeping 13 were my top reads of 2023. I think they are both incredible. They are unicorns. There is nothing out there like those books. And Tame and Seven focuses on the most incredible side character I have ever read in my whole life. And it is my mum, my husband, Gerard Gibson. Tame and Seven is gonna be all about his relationship with Claire and I cannot wait! I am so excited! Oh my God, I can't believe he's actually getting a book and we're gonna read it this year. He is one of the funniest characters I have ever read. And let me tell you something about me. I love me a funny man. If a fictional man can make me laugh, that's it, we're married. I'm basically pregnant. You are my baby daddy. And Gerard Gibson is up there in my top five book husbands. Yeah, he's not a book boyfriend, we're serious. Like, our relationship is endgame. He is so funny and adorable and his one-liners kill me. I cannot wait to read about his relationship with Claire. They're not together in Binding and Keeping 13 and we don't really know why. I think stuff has happened and that is all gonna be explored in Tame and Seven. Okay, and then the last book is one of my most anticipated reads ever. I have been waiting for this book for the longest time, along with many other fans of this author 
her work and the books that came before it. It is, of course, The Consequence by Ashley Jade. Again, the words and the choice were two of my top reads of 2023. I gave both of those books five stars. If you've read The Choice, you will know that it kind of ends on a cliffhanger and it's book one in that duet and The Consequence is the book that follows on from it. It was supposed to be released in 2023 and then it got pushed back because Ashley was going through issues in her personal life and she wasn't able to write it. And if it's not there in your head and you can't write, you can't write. You cannot force it. And I love the fact that she hasn't forced it. She's just put her hands on the air and said, I can't do it. The story's not coming to me. I'm going through some stuff and I don't want to rush through this and give you something that is going to disappoint you. So let me tell you something right now. This book, it has the potential to be my top reader 2024. It's going to wrap my world up. How are we going to find out what happens with Memphis and Skylar? And this isn't a spoiler, but if you've read The Choice, like we know that Memphis is meant to be getting married to that girl and she's pregnant but Skylar still has feelings for him and then there was all that stuff that went down in the choice it's gonna be explosive the drama is gonna wipe me out I might actually have to take some annual leave I think I'm gonna be able to do my day job whilst reading that book I'm gonna be so focused on those characters I can't wait cannot wait. So those are my 24 books that I am most excited to read in 2024. Please let me know what books you are most excited to read in 2024 and if we have any books that are the same. So thank you very much for watching. Happy New Year. I hope January is going well for you reading wise. I have had some good ones. I'm already so excited to do my January wrap up. I'm wishing this year away already. That is me. I am out and until next time. <laughs> I get it.